Something special coming today. Something very special arriving today. You guys remember Luke, my buddy, who built the chicken coop and he built the greenhouse, he built the doghouse for us. I had him build something specially commissioned. This is unique. Uh, something he's never done before. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Good morning, sir. What's up, buddy? Hey. How are you? I'm awesome. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. What you got back here? Uh, I'll show you. It's a nice cross buried beneath everything here. It's a cross. Dude, it's awesome. That is huge. <laughs> it is, the, yeah. <laughs> I didn't get the perspective from your pictures of how big that is. It always looks smaller on the camera, right? Yeah, it's going to be uh, pretty epic, man. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, show me where this thing goes and we'll get her okay. set on the ground. Let's do it. Good morning. It is kind of a windy day here in Texas. I am down in Georgetown at the Georgetown Church of the Nazarene. I'm getting to speak at their women's brunch. They are celebrating their May birthdays of their congregation, and I'm going to give a message and fellowship and, and food and um, just hopefully bring a message of encouragement to these ladies. So I will take it for this little man. Are you gonna cry this time or are you gonna be happy? Yeah. Yeah. You gonna get a haircut? Say okay. Has he been here before? No. Thank you. Okay. Can the haircut? Can you drive? Can you drive? Where's the horn? Say beep beep. started coming in Sissy's room and feeding Darla once a day. <laughs> That's a big carrot, Bubby. What do you think? Can you eat that carrot? Sissy's poof is kind of dirty. You can't have the whole thing. You gotta break it up. What do you think, Mabby? You got a new haircut today. And you did so good. There were no tears this time. You like your hair? You like your haircut, Bubby? There's a fly in here. Gosh, Sissy's room is a little bit messy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, she's trying to shove the whole thing in her mouth. Oh. <gasps> Did she just shove that whole carrot in her mouth, in her cheek? Oh my gosh, y'all. Look at that, that's too big, Darla. Oh my gosh. Okay, we need to get that out of your mouth. Okay, I'm gonna put you in your, <laughs> Darla. It's too big for you, baby. I'm gonna get that out of her mouth. Trying to hide everything in her cheeks. They can eat so much and hide it in their cheeks and then she'll go and she'll spit it out in her burrow down in her little cage. That's crazy. Okay, I think that's enough, Bubba. You giving her kisses? Mm. Ma. Let's see if I can show. She's gonna go back there and get rid of her carrot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Get your carrot out. Get your carrot out, Darla. It's too big. goes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, y'all? Man, so awesome. Mabby, you are starting to look like your big brother. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. What, that yeah? Yeah. That's mommy's that Sissy takes for me. That's my card reader. I also wanted to give y'all a quick update from my speaking engagement that I did at the women's birthday brunch. Whoa. I didn't get any video of that. They weren't filming it, so I don't have video of it. However, I gave the message on my Arise as well. So you guys can check that out. It's all about the promise of suffering and the power that we have through suffering. So you can go to Arise with Amber. Let go. Let go. You can um, search wherever your podcast platforms are found on Spotify or Google or Apple and you can listen to that message. Obviously, it'll be a little bit different because I tailored it for, the, for that women's group, but the gist of, of the message of the promise of suffering and the power that we have through that. So you guys can go check that out there. What? Oh. 
Mavi, can you say mama? Mama. Say dada? Dada. Say tai tai? Titi. Jazz? Tia. Say jazz. Guys. What? Si. Jazz? Guys. Can you say Jesus? Why in here, y'all? Oh, we just leave it on your head. <laughs> There's a fly. Do you know why we have lots of flies and fruit flies in here? Because Daddy does composting. And we have a compost bucket full of old fruits and vegetables on our counter. They bring in flies, and Granger teases me and calls them cute flies. I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Besides people not putting their shopping carts back, our fruit flies. Okay, I got the other one. And then the other one says Jesus saves and then ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. And those are all on arisewithamber.com along with lots of other t-shirts and hoodies and stickers. Hi. Hi. Hiya. Let me come with you. Okay. Let me come with you. Say bye. Bye. So yeah, Amber and I were talking yesterday. We could have like a little bench under here, something like this. But then if it, so, if it faced if it faced like this, just a little bit of an angle here, then you could still see it. I don't know. It, it's kind of up. It's still up for grabs. <laughs> Well, thankfully we've had a little rain. We have the soil's a little damp. Any farmer knows the soil's easier to work in. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Soil, right? That's right. Okay, so Luke was just telling me that there's no stain on this. He didn't use like a traditional stain. He instead he went to the internet and found a more natural approach. Yeah. So tell us about what you did. Yeah. So I just grabbed a gallon of vinegar, boiled it on the stove and uh, threw it in a, in a gallon glass jar. I took some steel wool, you know, separated it and just threw it in overnight. The water doesn't even really color that much, but when you brush it on, like five, 10 minutes, you'll see it starting to oxidize and it gives an aged look. So it beats putting a new coat of stain on and kind of it gives it a nice character versus adding a stain, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And I'm sure it'll naturally, um, you know, the it might fade a little, but the gray then will start coming out of the cedar, the natural aging process. Sure. Um, Okay. Here we go. This is the moment here. Depth, I think we're great. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean you lined it up perfectly. To... Yeah. I'm just going to wrap this up. Cleaned out this old building in Austin and had this massive timber board that had these square nails in. So I held them for a special project. Great. Yeah. This is the project. This is it. Yes, sir. So cool.
we are. So great. Hebrew at the top. Where did you research this? Um, Where'd you find your information? I just went online and I always knew there's three languages, mm -hmm. um, but I never knew, I didn't know the writing. So I just went online, found an image and had it engraved. So great. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, let's put it on. Let's do it. I'm gonna throw a hole through it. Yeah, it's on yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Interesting what we're doing because it's, it would be in first century Jerusalem, this would be the equivalent of us putting like an electric chair or an lethal, a lethal injection needle on display in our backyard. Wowzer. Right? Except actually this is far much worse of an execution than an electric chair or a guillotine. You know, it's like, oh, look at our, come look at our guillotine. It's right, really right. cool. It's, that's crazy. That's the irony in what we're doing. So when I saw these, I'm like, dude, this is a treasure. Just the sound of that kind of gives me chills. Yeah. Imagine I'm going through bone. How do you like it? I think it looks really cool. Yeah. So you think this would kind of just tie their feet and they'd run a nail through that? The picture you sent just showed the rope holding this to this. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, I mean, there were several forms. Sometimes they would just put their feet at the side and go right through the ankle. Right. Um, and then sometimes, yeah, they place their feet and go through the foot, I guess. You know, there's they, they we found tombs of heels with nails through yeah, the heels. Yeah. Have you seen that? Oh yeah. man! Yeah, right through the bone. They were That's really cool. the Romans were really good at what they did. Really, really good at it. Do you like it sort of hanging? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I, there probably wasn't a certain way of no. It was just like whatever the current guy was doing. Yeah. Yeah. You like this? Yeah, I like it. Cool. I'll fasten that. I'll copy that on the other side. Got it. Yeah, it's pretty great. Okay, man. <laughs> it's so there good. It it's epic. It's epic. Like from this angle right here with the with the silhouette of the sky, it just oh, yeah. looks yeah. really cool. I could see it being a really cool spot for reflection and, and rest. Yeah, I've got a little bench, actually, I'm gonna put under this little tree right here. A little, a little uh, rock yeah. bench. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, man, great work. Thank you. Appreciate working with you all again. This we, is awesome. We've been uh, planning on this cross for oh, five, six months, probably. I don't know. Yep. It's not, it wasn't his fault. It's, I mean, partly because I was like, hey, do other jobs. Do, do what you got to do. Don't put my yeah. job ahead of anything. Some jobs just take time to get yep. perfect, right? Yep. It's really good. It was, it was great, man. It's great. All right, brother. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yes.
I don't think. Is this kind of a peaceful place? I think so. Got a little shade here. And then got the barn here. And the house here. And the storm there. <laughs> like a good spot. I like it. You know, I have questions on whether it's good to have a cross on your property. One meaning you know, it's a form of execution. It's, it was actually the most gruesome form of execution that we have in human history. And the Romans didn't invent it, but they perfected it. And so to have the method, the tool of murder, of execution and torture in the cruelest form as a form of peace on your property is strange. Now, Christians know what the cross represents, and it represents the substitution of our sin by turning to the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ as the, the substitution for our wretchedness and, and our own sin. And if we, if we look at it that way, then that's where the peace comes from, but still is bringing a replica, a hunk of wood, to this property somehow taking away from what it represents and substituting for our own atonement. I, I don't know. But I think about it, you know, and if, I'll look at it this way. If I don't make an idol out of it, if I don't make it a thing to worship, if I don't look at that hunk of wood and somehow pray to it or kiss it or touch it or I uh, feel like if I if I write notes on it or you know magically things will suddenly happen in my life if I don't look at it in any of those ways and and just see what it means for my sin as my sin is covered by the act that was that was done in a real time, in a real historical place in history by a, a real savior. If I just look at it as what it represents, then that's good. And if one person comes to this property over the course of our time here and is drawn to it and ask questions about it, for instance, maybe somebody comes here to visit and they go, was it really that big? Or, is that a smaller version? And then where those where did those nails go? Through the bone? Through the hands? Through the feet? And how did they die? Through suffocation? By holding themselves, did they stay alive by holding themselves up? By propping themselves up on the, the foot nail? If, if questions like that lead to further questions, deeper questions, then it's a good thing to have it on this property. So these are things I've kind of worked through over the last few months. Um, I don't want to make an idol out of anything. I don't, I don't really agree with crucifixes or wearing crucifixes or uh, having uh, the image of Christ. I don't, I don't think we're supposed to do that. So um, I justify it because I think it's just a really neat, peaceful place to come to worship.